Mental Health Mondays. I am here to talk to you this week about all the things we don't like talking about. And so one of those things is the mama juice that we mentioned in our Facebook post, um, but other coping mechanisms that maybe we're not so proud of, some of our dark stuff that we don't like to even surface. So if you don't already have a journal, get one out or any type of piece of paper. It could be your kid's homework assignment that you flip over. <laughs> um, I like to have a notebook when I am doing this exercise. So if you have a notebook, go ahead and get it. And with your notebook, I'd like you to draw an upside down triangle. And so um, you can do it across the whole piece of paper or just make a little one like this. Oop, there we go. All right, upside down triangle. So we're going to start today with understanding our different parts within this shame triangle model that we work a lot with our clients on. And it's one of the fundamental lenses that we use here at Reset to start to dig a little bit below the surface and understanding some of our stuff that we've buried, we've hidden, we have avoided, we've numbed out. Um, so with this triangle, in the upper right hand corner, I want you to write the word ego. In the lower uh, tip of the triangle, I want you to write the word shame. In the upper left hand corner, I want you to write the word rebel. And then in the middle of the triangle, go ahead and write your name. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Ooh, there we go. Okay. All right, so the easiest parts to start identifying are our ego parts. And so these are the parts of us that we know or we see as important parts of our personality in that um, sometimes they tend to be a little bit intense or extreme but they're the parts of ourselves that really try to showcase who we are externally. They are the managers of our image, of our reputation. And so these are things like um, people pleaser or uh, type A, controlling. I'm saying some of mine. <laughs> um, a planner. Um, Maybe perfectionist is a good one to put on this one. Um, I'm going to put dieter because it's about restriction and control. Um, it could also be words like uh, overachiever. You get the idea. All right. So again, these are the parts of ourselves that is managing how we represent ourselves out there in the world. Um, it could be like the fashionista, right? Or the, the person that talks a ton or <laughs> things like that, okay? So then we're gonna go over to the rebel. And the rebel is the parts of ourself that tend to say, all right, I can't, this is too much. I can't keep sustaining this pace. I have, um, a level of burnout approaching. I'm feeling overly stressed. I don't like having all this control. It just feels too much like how the ego parts basically are in a pressure cooker. <clears throat> and the rebel's like, I'm releasing that lid. Like, let's let the lid off of the Instapot because I can't. This is too much. I feel like I'm going to explode. And so these are the behaviors the rebel engages in that allow us to let off the steam right? To relieve the pressure. And so these could be things like shopping, binging on food, alcohol consumption, uh, drinking, smoking, uh, lashing out, getting angry, right? Like explosive temper, uh, numbing out, isolating, being in bed all day, watching Netflix all day, um, again, some of those coping mechanisms to relieve the pressure. And they're things that in the moment make us feel good, right? It's that release, even though they might be things that we're like, I don't know if I like love the way that I did that, or I don't really know if I love the consequences of that behavior. So again, ego are the things that control our image to the external environment. Rebel are the parts of ourselves that we are using to release 
the pressure that we put on ourselves through the ego parts. Okay, so now why these are important. So we all have shame. We all have experiences, memories, traumas that have affected the way in which we show up in the world. And so one of those uh, parts that we really need to drill in on are, okay, what are the earliest memories that I have where I started making meaning about who I am as an individual? And when looking at brain science and how our brain develops, usually we start to create these messages around seven or eight years old, first or second grade. The reason for this is that our brain is developing in a way prior to then that is simply about data collection. We don't yet have the developmental skills to connect the dots to then create meaning about ourselves or the world. And so the first seven years of life, you're collecting data. Oh, when this happened, this happens. This happens and this happens. And then we say, okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean about me? And what does that mean about the world around me? So that's when we then come up with I statements. Oh, I am unlovable unless I do this. I am unworthy. I am not good enough. I am less than. I am dumb. I am too big. I am too small. I am too strong. I am not strong enough. I am um, a failure. And so we develop these shame stories, these messages about ourselves, And then the ego is there to say, keep that stuff hidden. Don't let it out. Don't let anyone see it. Let's pretend it doesn't exist. Because if it comes out, if it comes to the surface, well, that's even more so shameful, right? That's vulnerable. That is letting the world know that you don't have your stuff together or that you feel insecure. And the reason that the ego is so protective of this is that the ego is always trying to not let us get hurt again, right? Because the shame stories are typically built off of something that hurt us, someone or something that hurt us. And it could even be external messages from the world, right? It could just be cultural messages that we're receiving through media, through reading, just through scanning our environment. And so the ego is like, well, I don't like the way that made me feel. I don't like how that just feels inside my body. I don't want to have to deal with that again. So let's take on these roles, take on these personality types that allow us to keep that stuff hidden and buried and not have to do it and go through it again. So shame stories go at the bottom. So again, experiences, memories, traumas, stuff that you just don't like talking about, thinking about, you just bury. So I didn't write all my parts out, but you can see right here, the triangle, okay? So the reason I'm talking about this stuff as the stuff we don't wanna talk about is because so often, and what ends up being destructive is that our ego parts of us become the parts of us that we think are us, that we think are real. And they lead us to continue to behave in a way that keeps us on a hamster wheel, keeps us at a really high hypervigilance and stressed out level. Uh, that essentially leads to burnout. And not only that, it's acting inauthentically. It's not actually who you are. It is simply a part of you. In that if the shame story was resolved, if the trauma was healed, you might still be someone who is a future tripper or someone who still likes to have control, but will it not be in such an augmented way in which you end up suffering at the, at the cost of it? Right? So that you won't need this rebel part of you that needs to just release steam and to cope and to just completely <laughs> try and balance out the pressure from the ego. Because these parts of us are actually beautiful and they have a lot of purpose, right? Like I, I like the fact that I can be somewhat controlling because I just, it makes me feel a little bit more grounded and I just like how I show up in the world in that way. But when a shame story is exacerbated, like the I am a failure shame story is exacerbated, my ego part of control just like skyrockets. And then I start micromanaging my team, which they will admit that it happens. Or I'll go in and I'll like, there were times in my life when I felt so ungrounded or my shame stories have been so triggered that I literally would like plan to run a marathon and put together the entire training document for it. Like I had a spreadsheet and I would document every single detail of the training program, 
never actually running the marathon. <laughs> it was just like the joy of planning something down to the details. Like, it, right? It, it just like went into overdrive. So the purpose is to bring awareness to this. So then we can say, oh, wow, that's not me. Like I'm recognizing that that part of me is escalated because one of my traumas, experiences, memories, shame stories is being triggered right now. And then why? Because also what happens is we don't want to gauge in too much of these rebel behaviors that we end up, <laughs> ooh, I can't write backwards right now. <laughs> there we go. We end up going back to the shame, right? The shame gets reignited again because we engage in a rebel activity that then says, oh, here I go again. I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. Look at me. I'm self-sabotaging. And then this kind of cycle continues. Hopefully this makes sense. Drop questions if you have questions. This is a lens for understanding ourselves, a lens for understanding who we really are. Because here's the thing. When this stuff is not ignited, this is who we really are. It's in the absence of some of these parts that then we gain clarity on who we really are. And the practice of this, because it is a practice, everything is, is the ability to step back and say, okay, if I am, if I am noticing my reaction right now, if this need to mm, control the situation right now is because of one of my shame stories is being ignited, Okay, can I step back from that, observe it, and figure out how to heal and rectify that in the moment so I don't end up going down this traditional and familiar role that leads to my burnout and dissatisfaction in general. Or let's say we're engaging in a behavior like drinking too much, too much wine at the end of the day. We're able to ask ourselves and sit back and say, okay, what's actually going on here? Where am I building on too much pressure, too many expectations? Where am I having unrealistic expectations because of behavior that has led me to overdrive because of a shame story of not feeling good enough or of comparison or feeling like I should be better at this, I should be doing better. And therefore I feel the need to cope through drinking, smoking, shopping, whatever it is. And so this is not to say that the coping mechanisms are all bad and that everything in moderation ends up being somewhat okay. But when you're recognizing that you're pulling towards one of these coping mechanisms, one of these release mechanisms more often than maybe you would like to, or you feel like is healthy for you, and you're realizing that you're doing it to compensate for maybe a lot of the pressure you're putting on yourself, well, then it's time to look back and try and be objective and just to observe and ask yourself the questions and say, okay, what do I actually need in this moment? What do I really need? What is being triggered right now? And is it a story that I've been creating and reinforcing for the last 35 years? Is it true? Is it not true? Again, we kind of start to do this reflection with ourselves because ultimately we want to end up here in the middle. And that's, that's just us. That's who we are in the absence of triggers and the absence of reactive states. And so the more that we can fall in the middle, and we can be conscious and observational about our choices and our intentions, well then the more that we're gonna feel more genuine, more satisfied, more secure, more confident, and more content within ourselves. If this is something that you want to dig in further, please drop us a line, call us, connect with us at any point. We love working with this shame triangle system, again, to build that awareness, to be reflective, and start to just uncover some of the stuff that we've buried that has manipulated who we think we are for decades and being able to unravel that and say, wait a second, I think I, I think this is actually all based on this thing <laughs> and I want to rewrite the story because I don't like who I am anymore and I don't like who I'm becoming and I don't like some of my coping mechanisms. I don't like some of my habits. All right. When you're doing this, please be compassionate with yourself. It's incredibly important to be forgiving, compassionate, understanding you are doing the best you could in the moment, all right? Again, questions, comments, feedback, get back to us at Reset. You can always visit our website and book a free 20-minute phone call with one of our therapists to just see if it might be a good fit for you to start down the journey of more self-discovery. Thinking of all of you today and always, take care. Happy Monday.